Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, as I said earlier, I welcome everybody and thank you for giving me the opportunity to give the keynote speech on this particular important activity that is happening in Africa, the future of additive manufacturing in Africa. It is a known fact that Africa is well endowed with natural resources, human resources, tourist sites, arable lands. However, the problem is how to harness these massive resources for our own use. Different strategies have been put in place. Many are basically traditional. Then we realize that it is important that we find a way of changing our own mindset and see how we can upgrade. Yes, Africa must adopt advanced manufacturing technology in order to upgrade. How can we do that? And why is it necessary? We realize that advanced manufacturing technology is what the other countries or the developed countries or rapidly developing countries are using in order to actually grow their economy. It took Britain about 58 years to double their per capita output. It took USA 47, Japan 33, Indonesia 17, 11 for South Korea, but it took China only seven years to do that. This is amazing and therefore it is important for us to see how we will be able to use this particular technology to develop. You can see that different countries that adopt advanced manufacturing technology grow gradually along the line and uh, you can see from 19, uh, 1980 China was number seven in the world, 1990 was still number seven in the world, adopting this advanced manufacturing technology around that time of 2000 China started to rise and then now in 2018 up to 2019, perhaps 2020, China is still leading the world. And you can see that South Korea wasn't even number 25, it was about number 20, uh, 25th in 1980, but South Korea, I, I mean, uh, yeah, South Korea is now maybe number five in, 19, in 2018. 18. So this is an amazing way of making, uh, I mean, quickly finding a way of uh, growing the economy. We have been enjoying very smooth ride in that particular aspect of development until recently when coronavirus disease that is called COVID-19 just came in around 20, around towards the end of 2019, precisely in December, maybe 31st December when Wuhan in China got this particular world pandemic. It has disrupted economic activities, health education, many other sectors. And the government around the world introduced travel restrictions in order to contain the virus. The situation is still unchanged. We are trying still to contain it. So what is happening globally and what is happening in Africa and particularly in Nigeria? The fact is that the number is as the confirmed case is approaching 5 million, while at the global level, then the number of recovery is about 1.7, while the death is about 3.22. What is, uh, I mean, 3,200 uh, something. Then in Africa, we have confirmed cases of about 91,000, and then we have recovery of about 36,000, then a death of almost getting to 3,000. This is remarkable and therefore the world has been challenged. Everybody has been challenged. We have witnessed something that has never been seen globally. This is a different terrain that we've never envisaged. And it came with, with uh, when we are unprepared. Consequently, we realized that there was a lot of shortages of medical facilities and supply. So in total, we realized that this has given a lot of lessons to Africa. One of the lessons is that it has tested our social, economic, and political resilience. This is number one, and this is truly everywhere in Africa. There are a number of measures that have been taken by government to see, and people have been, you know, put in kind of isolation, quarantine, all these are all kind of tests that comes with this COVID-19. And then COVID-19 has actually made Africa to really think of a uh, kind of uh, investing in health system. We also have this particular aspect that lack of essential health care uh, supplies has triggered now a debate about the necessary industrialization of Africa. It is now or never. 
industrialization has been preaching industrialization for a long time all over Africa. Only a few African countries are able to really get a path that they have defined and it's making, they're making progress along the river. Majority of African countries are finding it very difficult to really find a way of making, uh, creating their own industrialization. We rely on mostly, we consume whatever that is produced outside with little input within the countries to produce our own uh, uh, products. So this is, uh, these are the three lessons as I, uh, I mean, mentioned earlier. So what is the problem with that? When the COVID-19 struck, it was difficult for the conventional manufacturing technology to provide some support. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, it was difficult for conventional manufacturing technology to provide immediate support. Why? The conventional manufacturing technology is cumbersome and it relies on so many activities. The value chain is very long and therefore it is really pertinent for some activity for a new, uh, I mean, manufacturing technology to come and rescue the situation. And that is where additive manufacturing provided the needed intervention at the time when it was desperately required. The fact is that it requires no tooling, it requires nothing for you to set up the additive manufacturing technology. It is only the printer with design that includes computer and software and then the materials for your print. Any other thing will be secondary. So this is all about setting up even a mobile factory. You can have everything in your back to start production, which we'll be able to, notify, uh, to notice in the next few slides. So what is this additive manufacturing? Additive manufacturing is one of the advanced manufacturing technologies. It is a very interesting technology that allow, uh, I mean, people to use this technology to develop from a kind of a conceived idea that is put in a kind of a computer edit design and which will be translated into a solid object. So additive manufacturing is commonly referred to as the 3D printing. It's one of the advanced manufacturing technologies that we refer to as one of the disruptive technologies that is referred to as the third industrial revolution in some of the uh, scenarios. It is capable of speedily transforming the manufacturing landscape of Africa. 3D printing is something that we have to reckon with. It's a force that we have to reckon with. I made presentations here and there in many places, and I mentioned that perhaps this is the last chance, or probably one of the best chances that Africa will ever have. And therefore, it is important that we take this particular advantage and see how we'll be able to transform the manufacturing landscape of Africa so that we'll be able to be dependent on Africa rather than going to import almost everything, including every tiny spare part. I use the African proverb to relate the 3D printing or additive manufacturing as it relates to some of the conventional manufacturing technology. And this, it goes, as you say it in that particular slide. The ant is the advanced manufacturing, uh, is the additive manufacturing, while the bottom is the conventional technology. And therefore, with additive manufacturing, you'll be able to do more with less. And this is the message. So what is the, how do you describe this additive manufacturing? How do you really have, how do you, how do you uh, categorize it? For example, we have manufacturing that we call additive manufacturing. We have subtractive manufacturing. The subtractive manufacturing is the mostly the known one because you keep subtracting parts. You keep subtracting pieces of material from a known material in order to have a shape that you want. So you gather a lot of waste in order to shape a particular material. While in additive manufacturing, all you need to do is to design and then make your own 3D model. Uh, as soon as you get that data, try to translate it into a solid object. So it is a process by the process of being that's mostly layer by layer. And therefore, 
at the end of the day, you end up with minimum waste. In some cases, no waste. So this is a very kind of this is a very important uh, manufacturing technology. So when I was coming, some people asked me. They said that um, please, if you think about three D uh, printing, what kind of paper do you use to print with three D printer? I said, well, I think it is important for me to come up with this very simple way of making it easy for people. When you print with paper, you are printing in 2D. When you three, print, print with 3D printer, you are printing in three-dimensional. And therefore, paper is a paper. That is 2D printing. A cup, for example, is 3D printing. You can print your cup of tea. You can print the cover of your mobile phone. You can print a flower base and so many other things in 3D printing. It is a tangible product that you can use you know, cast shadow and do anything. This is the process flow chart of, uh, I mean, 3D printing. You first of all get your CAT model, uh, you conceive and then design your CAT model, and then the machine requires some kind of uh, information that will allow it, will allow the 3D printer to understand. It can understand the CAT model, and therefore it goes through the STL file and then a slicing software that will slice it so that the 3D printer will follow what the slicing software says. It will now continue to deposit layer by layer. At the end of the day, you have a replica of what you have in the 3D CAT model. The process is really interesting. At the, there are different kinds of 3D printing processes. We have the technology, we have the processes, and then we have the material. The technology varies. Basically, there are about eight or nine different technologies, and uh, a number of new technologies are coming up. Most of them have their roots related to one of these. One of the technologies that is very popular is called the fused deposition modeling, FDM, and it uses almost all the materials that are available. And uh, this fused deposition medaling is what actually we proposed for the African or recommended for the African Union when they said they would like to adopt certain, uh, they would like to adopt some uh, technologies in, for Africa. They selected eight different technologies and then I met a presentation recommendation of 3D printer, printing technology out of the different 3D printing technologies, we believe that diffuse deposition modeling, which is the FDM, is the easiest to adapt and it can be replicated. It is fairly cheap compared to others and it is very simple to use. And therefore, this particular technology of fused deposition modeling is something that anybody, a beginner, can start. Uh, I mean, it can be in the academic institution or any other place. So you can see that uh, the materials that I use for 3D printing now, they have no limit actually. Many, all these materials are possible to do. Before it was only polymer, mostly plastics. Now we can use almost all the known materials to 3D print and get the required result. The things related to 3D printing, since it started, it made a, cam a comeback uh, around 2013, and since then it has been increasing. So the increase, it is showing that we will have something like, within the next few years, like six years, about $12 billion business within that one. And basically there are three components, the printers, the materials and the services. We expect that the material or the printers, the production of printers will be everywhere very soon and therefore it will be saturated the market. However, we keep expecting diversification in the areas of materials for 3D printing and services will actually increase. I do not want to go in detail, into details related to the materials, but you can see but metal powder, that is the metal 3D printing, is rapidly gaining ground everywhere. That is to say that if only this thing succeeds, Africa will have a lot to really uh, expect in the transformation of its own industrialization process. Um, we have to see some examples that are available of 3D printing technology in Africa. There, is basic, there are a few African countries that are actually doing pretty well. The first and the most important country in 
that are dealing with three different technology are South Africa. South Africa is South Africa. South Africa is actually leading the whole of African countries in 3D printing technology. They have a national policy that actually supports that one. And uh, we have other countries that are trailing, Uganda, South uh, should, uh, Sudan, Nigeria, Kenya, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, and a few other countries, including Togo. They are all trying to see how they can use 3D printing technology to support their growth. And um, if you look at this particular figure, you will realize that it is divided into three. We have the leaders, we have the challengers, and then we have the followers. There is no single African country that challenges uh, the, the challenge leaders. And there, are, there is only in this, only South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. The problem is that as for Nigeria, the situation is almost dormant. As you can see in this situation, there is basically very little change in the development in 3D printing. When South Africa has moved to a very, very beautiful position and we expect that it will continue to move, so you can see the situation. But in Nigeria, we have almost very little opportunity to grow the market of 3D printing. But I'm sure that with this particular pandemic, it is an opportunity for Nigeria to grow and all other African countries, I think, will join the bargain.